Hello, my name is Peter Holzkorn and this is a Spexel or Space Pixel. And with it, or rather a predecessor of it, the Future Lab started its journey into swarms and art. In 2012, we were among the first in the world to let swarms of drones fly in formation, not piloted individually, but controlled by a central command system. And the first public appearance of these pixels was a spectacular light show. Inspired by beautiful phenomena in nature, we called this a swarm. Of course, the shows were predetermined and choreographed in contrast to swarms in nature, which are much more unpredictable and have their own mind. We were really going for inventing a new form of visual expression. And this format, this new medium, was so successful that in the following years, we developed our own team, our own department, who performed these swarm light shows across the world, from Sweden to China and from Sydney to Rio. And also, we, as we were pioneering this format, uh, other drone operators and organizations were inspired by its success and soon joined us in establishing this as a new medium. So how does our system work? Well, for the Spexels, at every point in time, they get their waypoints from a central application, a central point that coordinates them. And the software that runs on the drones themselves was really customized for these LED drones to work with this tight command logic. So that was all well and good for the Spexels, but after a few years uh, uh, of doing these shows and working with this, we wanted to expand what the Swarm could do. We wanted to extend it to new vehicles and new ideas, and the system had to keep up. So the biggest challenge that we were facing was monitoring and controlling a Swarm consisting of different types of vehicles of different hardware and capabilities. So that's why we came up with what we call Swarm OS like an operating system for your PC coordinates all the bits and pieces of hardware in it to allow you to really focus on the application, this is what Swarm OS does for Swarms. Swarm OS consists of two core components. One of them is the implant. It's a little device that you can attach to a drone, robot, or other vehicle to make it compatible to Swarm OS. The other central component is ground control a desktop application that we made that allows a human operator to monitor the swarm at all times, to control it, and to intervene if necessary. For today's flight, my colleague Manuel has been operating ground control. Manuel, would you explain to us what happens in this application? It is designed to manage the human operator's attention as best as possible. While the drones may be performing a choreography or even react dynamically to their environment, the human operator can always intervene. Swarm OS at this point is a very centralized system. While the drones are performing their actions and reporting their status, all decisions are made centrally. And what can we see on your screen right now? The biggest part is an overview of all the drones and their respective statuses with any potential problems highlighted. Here next to it, we see a 3D view um, with all the drones in their environment. Here in deep space, we are tracking the drones with optical markers, so we can also see those in the 3D view. With this, I can now send dynamic waypoints to the drones or even perform choreographies. If we were outdoors, I would uh, do pretty much the same, but instead of optical mode, I would start ground control in GPS mode. Swarm OS has come a long way, and it's really been propelled forward by one project in particular, and that is the Fluxels, a swarm of ground robots with LED displays. So where the spaxels are dots in space, these fluxels are kind of mosaics on a plane. We reduce the dimensions from three to two, but at the same time, we increase the resolution and really expand the degree of detail that we can have. 
These display bots were developed together with our partner NTT, a Japanese telecom provider, to create new visions for new types of swarm interaction for Tokyo 2020. And the project has changed a lot over the last couple of years, and the public appearances of these bots so far only showed a little of what they are really capable of. So for example, we have a differential drive unit in the driving part of the bot, which allows it to go up to 30 kilometers per hour, which is quite fast for this size, and also take it over rough surfaces so we can drive it indoors and outdoors, uh, making it pretty versatile. At the same time, we have a central rotation axis that makes it possible to have the top oriented independently of the driving direction so we can display beautiful continuous images across the whole swarm. We were joking that it, was, it took us a couple of years to reduce the dimensions from three to two, uh, but there is a truth to it. This was actually our biggest challenge yet because the Spexels, if there's a problem with one of the drones, then it can return to its base or it can simply descend gracefully. But if one of these bots has a problem and it's in a densely packed formation, which we need to display these images, that is actually a, a big challenge to deal with. And all the other bots need to find a solution to deal with it. So the display and the positioning system and all the interfaces for the drive unit together make up a beautiful, complex, unique system. Uh, so you can see it here. For example, the bot that you saw drive in earlier had an optical tracking system, but this unit has a state-of-the-art centimeter precision satellite-based navigation system. And that's very new technology, and it took us a while to know how to deal with it and to really fine-tune it. Some of the other components here you have the implant, which you know is part of Swarm OS. It's integral to the communication. In this case, we also built in a backup communication channel that uses mobile data, so we can really have more dependability. And that kind of approach is true also for some other critical components for which we built up backup channels to make this swarm as reliable as possible. The development of all this is connected to an unusual and very tight collaboration between the Future Lab team and NTT's researchers that was kind of amplified by the COVID crisis and the travel restrictions. So normally we would go there and uh, in the last phases really, uh, really do everything ourselves on site or as much as possible. In this case, we had to do a very deep knowledge transfer with the NTT researchers and work with them uh, over countless remote sessions across time zones and all sorts of other challenges. So um, it was a really unique way to have a distributed team work together on this project. The biggest appearance of these flaxels so far has been at two key events during the Olympic torch relay in Japan. And this whole project represents our latest step in swarm choreographies. But let's look at a different approach uh, to swarm interactions in our next project. Where is my soul? Together with the digital pen and tablet manufacturer Wacom, we explored this question last year in a project called Space Inc. So in contrast to a pre-animated choreography of drones, here, the swarm becomes a brush and dynamically interacts with the creative energy of the artist or their soul. This is where the name of the project comes from. So if I draw on this tablet where you can see the interface of our spacing application, then these paths are followed by a drone in real 3D space. And the LED light that the drone emits is captured by a long-term exposure and translate it into a live light painting. So we have a new way of mediating painting through the 3D space. This is one mode, and we have other modes. A second mode is I don't just have one drone, which directly follows my path, but also a second one, uh, and the system extracts from my brush stroke subjective qualities like directionality and determination and energy. 
So something that we could call emotional qualities of a brush stroke. And the second drone in the system interprets that and responds with its own path variations. In a third mode, we have also two drones and two artists. So each artist controls one of the drones and they can draw whatever they want. Uh, but in the 3D space, the drones have particular rules of movement. So they have to evade each other and not collide. And thus, they add their own kind of agency to the system and make it uh, more dynamic and even generative. So these long-term exposures, the light painting, is uh, being projected in real time onto a wall behind where the drone is moving. So you can see how this light painting is being created uh, as you watch it in the real space. And also the paths that we create are stored in a 3D format so you can map them to all kinds of other uh, things and play around with them later on. The whole project was a very tight collaboration with researchers from Wacom. And in particular, one of the researchers was an experienced sketch artist who provided us with a lot of very interesting input from his perspective on and his experience of sketching and painting and making concept art with this unusual mechanical element, with the physicality and the inertia that our approach brought to the process of drawing and how it impacts the creative energy. So the goal here was not a precise performance, but a new creative tool that really challenges our creativity and inspires us. First, we looked at precise choreographies, full control over the system and total creative control. Then, in the second part, we looked at more dynamic reactive systems. But the full potential of swarms can only really be tapped when we allow the individual parts of the swarms to make their own decisions up to a point, to be more autonomous and give them simple rules of behavior and thus get emergent systems and find something that's more than the sum of its parts. And then the swarm may achieve things that we never imagined, uh, not just in art, but in all kinds of other areas of society. So this is the area that I'm looking at in the key research topic of artificial collectives that we have here in the Future Lab. And that also means with this increased autonomy, we give up this total creative control. We give up a part of the control that we have over the swarm and we allow it to make more of its own decisions to surprise us and be much less predictable. But in the end, we are its designers. So we can determine what it can and should do. So the possibilities are endless. On the one hand, we can have really swarm-like dynamic behaviors inspired by the swarms and similar things that we find in nature. Uh, with more autonomy and all sorts of intricate behaviors. And we may also find completely new forms of visual expression that we didn't expect. Swarms, robots that cooperate and coordinate, work together uh, to achieve new things, would shape, shape our society in the future. So that means that we approach this right now from the perspective of art. We try to open our minds and shape the discussion before they arrive in our daily lives with their full autonomous potential. At the Future Lab, we have lots of ideas for this type of technology. And to follow what we're doing, you can, of course, keep updated on our website. Thank you. Hello, my name is Kyoko Kuno. I am an artist and a key researcher of Arts Electronica Future Lab. In the next episode, episode 7, I would like to invite you into a journey about art thinking. Art thinking is one of the research projects at the Arts Electronica Future Lab investigating the role of art in our society today. Now, 
we face on accelerating technological development, unstable economic and political condition, and pandemics. The power of art, finding essential issues, creating new ideas, inviting people to dialogue and discussions is a driving force that encourages people in a certain society. I'm looking forward to see you there. Don't miss it.